This training video is brought to you by the Directorate of Agricultural Extension Services of the Ministry of Food and Agriculture with technical support from the Council for Scientific and Industrial Research. Mango farmers in Ghana risk losing their investment as the dreaded bacterial black spot BBS disease attacks their mango trees. Most mango farms in major production areas like Kintampo, Atebubu, Nkoranza, Wenchi and Techumen have been affected by the devastating disease. Sources say the outbreak of BBS disease in mango production is also rife in Yulokrobo areas of the eastern region. The BBS disease attacks mango and other tree crops such as cashew and citrus. It weakens the branches and causes damage so the fruit drops prematurely. The disease was first reported in the country somewhere around 2012 and it has since been living comfortably with tree crop farmers, especially mango farmers. In this video, you will learn how to identify the bacteria black spot disease, prevent and manage the disease and increase productivity of mango farmers. This training video is brought to you by the Directorate of Agricultural Extension Services of the Ministry of Food and Agriculture with technical support from the Council for Scientific and Industrial Research. In Ghana currently, the major problem of mango production is the incidence of a bacterial disease known as the mango bacteria black spots. In literature, the disease is also called mango bacteria blight, but the two are the same. So whether bacteria black spot or bacteria blight, we are talking about the same disease. The difference in naming comes up when the size of the spots varies. When you have individual smaller spots, it is known as black spot. But when two or more of the spots come together or coalesce together, as we used to say, then it becomes a bacterial blight. Mango bacterium black spot is a disease caused by a bacteria or a bacterium called Xanthomonas campestris patova mangifera indica. The bacteria has other strains which are found in other food crops. For example, we have the bacteria, the same type of bacteria causing disease, a similar disease in citrus. And that one is, is called Xanthomonas campestris patova citri. And it's the same bacteria or the, they are from the same family that are found in cassava as well. That one is called Xanthomonas campestris patova manihotis. In all these different crops, the bacterium cause almost the same kind of destruction. Mango bacterium black spot was one of the diseases previously unknown in Ghana. The mango bacteria black spot disease was first identified in India in 1881. But it was not until 2006 that the disease was first reported in Ghana. In fact, the first report of the disease was made in the northern region where some mango orchards, which were raised from seedlings that were brought from Burkina Faso, started showing the symptoms. So the current spread of the disease is suspected to have started from planting materials that were imported from Burkina Faso into Ghana. Currently, the disease has been found in all the mango growing regions of Ghana. In fact, work that we have done so far have shown that the disease is in Greater Accra, it's in the Eastern region, it's in the Volta region, very, very prevalent in the Brongahafo region and in the Northern region as well. So currently, all the mango growing areas of Ghana are battling with the mango bacteria black spot disease. When a mango farm is infected 
with the bacterium, it causes several damages. The first is that the plant will not grow normally. It will retard its growth. So if you put in fertilizer, you'll be watering, the plant will still not be responding to the way you want it. This training video is brought to you by the Directorate of Agricultural Extension Services of the Ministry of Food and Agriculture with technical support from the Council for Scientific and Industrial Research. So one way ask, how important is the mango bacteria black spot that people are making so much noise about it? There are several damages that the disease can cause when it gets to your farm. In the first place, the disease can reduce the productivity of your plants. By this, I mean the time that you want the plants to flower, they won't. Or even if they flower, the flowers will be very minimal in numbers. Because the disease debilitates the plant. By that, I mean the disease does not allow the plant to carry out its normal health processes. So the plant naturally becomes like a sick plant. Number two, the plant will go undergo a lot of defoliation. So most of the leaves on your plant will drop. When that happens, the plant cannot photosynthesize normally to produce enough food for you. So eventually, the disease will reduce the productivity of your, your plants. Number three, when your fruits are in season and they are, your plant has produced a lot of fruits, one month to harvesting, you realize that your fruits will start dropping one after the other. The fruits that are not matured, they will start dropping one after the other. If you are lucky and some fruits did not drop but grows to maturity, the disease will create black spots on the fruit. And apart from the black spots, reducing the aesthetic value of the plant, it will also create cracks that will serve as entry point for other fungus to rot the fruit. So, if you are a farmer and the mango bacteria black spot gets into your farm, it can cause about 80% to 100% loss. By this, I mean, if your tree produces 100 fruits, 80 of them will drop prematurely or they will have spots on them that will make them unmarketable. So eventually, all your lifetime savings that you have put into the farm will be lost because you may not have any fruits to sell. How will a farmer know that the disease is actually present on his farm? The first thing that a farmer will realize will be his trees actually starting to drop leaves rapidly. And so the entire plant canopy will look less dense compared to the normal trees that he knows. Secondly, when the farmer stands at some distance and look into the tree canopy, he will find that some of the twigs will be poking up and their edges will be rounded and will look like a scion that has been prepared for transplanting. That alone tells the farmer that the bacteria is present on his farm. So apart from the rapid defoliation, we can, the farmer will also find some symptoms on the leaves. The symptoms are characterized by some black spots on the leaves. And to be able to tell the difference between the bacterial black spot symptoms and any other symptoms that are black, the black spot the mango bacteria black spot symptoms do not grow across a leaf vein. Meanwhile, other symptoms may grow across a leaf vein. 
But the mango bacteria black spot almost always grows in between the leaf veins. And the symptoms, the, the spots are slightly raised. So when you look at it, you have the impression that you could easily pull it off the leaf, which is almost impossible. Compared to other symptoms, which do not show such raised symptoms, uh, raised spots. Then we come to the fruit. The fruit symptoms start with some kind of an oily spot. So if the farmer is always scouting or monitoring his fruits and looking at how they are growing, the first thing you will see will be like an oil spot on the fruit. With time, the spot begins to enlarge and turns into a black, slightly raised spot. As the spot enlarges, it cracks open and it forms what we call a star crack. So you see the, 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 the crack in form of a star. This training video is brought to you by the Directorate of Agricultural Extension Services of the Ministry of Food and Agriculture with technical support from the Council for Scientific and Industrial Research. Movement of the disease from one place to the other can be divided into two forms. We have what we call short distance movement or dispersal and then long distance movement or dispersal. From one district or region to the other could be considered long distance. While from the same in the while from one plant to the other on the same farm could be a short distance dispersal, or farms that are adjacent to each other at the same locality could also be short distance. The long distance dispersal is mainly through movement of planting materials. We all know that most mango farms are established using mango seedlings. Therefore, if a farmer buys a mango seedling that has the disease on it, once that seedling is sent to the farm, even if just a single seedling that is infected, eventually every plant that will be established on the same farm as that seedling will also be infected. Therefore, movement of infected seedlings is largely responsible for long distance spread of the mango bacterium black spot. The next long distance movement of the disease occurs through the tracks that carries mangoes from one farm to the other. If the track enters into a farm that is highly, that is already infected, it is likely that the bacteria will spread on the body of the track. When such track enters into a farm, either close by or far away, whether the, the farm has the disease or not, it is likely to also contract the disease. Another way by which the mango bacterial black spot spreads, either short distance or long distance, is by the movement of aerosols. Aerosols can be described as a fine mist that are normally generated when the temperatures are high. So as the mist is moving from one point to the other, it collects bact any bacterium that, is that has fallen on the soil and then transport it to other places. So wherever it gets, it loses momentum, then it drops the bacterium there. Therefore, aerosol is one way by which the bacterium can invade most barriers. The other way that the bacterium spreads from one place to the other is from infected trees. Farmers normally pack mangoes into trees and they go and they will away. And when such trees are infected with the bacterium or are smeared with the bacterium and the same trees are carried into a farm that, that is, doesn't have the problem, eventually the disease, the bacterium will either be left in the soil or will touch the, 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 the trees. Eventually, the bacterium will move on to those trees. And another thing most traders do 
is that when they want to pack the fruits in the crates, they get mango leaves, they line the tray inside of the trays with the mango leaves first before they put the fruits. And when they get to there, wherever they want, after removing the mango fruits, they discard those leaves. When those leaves have the bacterium, they infect the trees. The other way we can do that mango trees are infected is through the water that we use for irrigation and even for spraying insecticides and weedicides. Bacterium can inhabit and multiply rapidly when they fall into water. Therefore, if a farmer is going to spray his farm and is going to fetch water that is contaminated with the bacterium, once he uses the water to spray the chemicals either on the trees or under the trees, he eventually transmits the bacterium into his field. When you look at one major problem, one major way by which the bacterium is disseminated from tree to tree is what we call the bacterium laden rain drops. When it rains, the water that collects on the leaves will induce the bacterium to multiply rapidly in it. And as the wind blows, it throws such leaves. Eventually, the water that had collected on the leaves will also be dispersed. And depending on the speed of the wind, that water leading bacterium will be trans transported closer or nearer. Eventually, all trees that are on the path of that movement will be infected. There are other minor, minor ways by which the bacterium infects, such as a farmer will go and use pruning implements in one field that are infected and comes to use the same pruning tools in a different farm without sterilizing it, he transmits them. Another way is that when it rains and a farmer is passing through his farm, all the plants, all the leaves that have the raindrops on them will be dispersed when the farmer touches the leaves eventually. So trees that were not infected initially will also be infected. Therefore, farmers will have to take a lot of precautions in preventing either short or long distance dispersal of the bacteria. So far, my research has shown that the mango bacteria black spot is causing a lot of loss to farmers. And even people who now want to go into mango farming are confused as to whether their investment will yield any dividends. But the answer is yes. Although the disease is destructive, we can find solution to it. In our next video, I will touch and discuss the ways by which we can manage the mango bacteria black spot such that the farmer will get his returns. This training video is brought to you by the Directorate of Agricultural Extension Services of the Ministry of Food and Agriculture with technical support from the Council for Scientific and Industrial Research. Thank you for watching this video. For further information, contact the Directorate of Agricultural Extension Services.